Mitch Keller is due for a rebound start after opening day against the Nationals. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back, everybody, to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. My name is Ethan Smith, your host of this wonderful show here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where I bring you, of course, all of your news, analysis, opinions, and reactions to everything going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You can follow me on Twitter right there at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates. For all of that stuff that I just mentioned before, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks and Game Time. More on them later. But folks, we had an off day yesterday. A little bit of a stress reliever from some of the things that we've seen already from this Pittsburgh Pirates team to begin the season. Obviously, beginning the season 5-0, and obviously with the sweep of the Miami Marlins to begin things off. And then on Monday, they beat the Washington Nationals to kick off that series And we get game two of that series tonight. We'll preview that later on the show. But it will be Mitch Keller on the mound tonight in Washington for his second start of the season. And a lot of people go back and look at Mitch Keller's first start that he had this year. And they would say, you know, could have been a lot better against that Miami Marlins team. He even could you could tell that he even felt the same way it was just one of those starts for Mitch Keller that you don't want to consistently see now the Pirates did end up getting the win that day but they had to fight and claw back in that one if you needed a reminder obviously Keller in that start gave up seven hits in five and two-thirds innings also gave up four earned runs and five runs total two walks and three strikeouts on the day just not the start that Keller was really looking for. And when you go back and you watch that start, which I did before I started recording the show today, where I just went back and watched, you could just see that a lot of that start was just dictated by him getting into good counts, but then just missing his spots in those good counts. He would get to two, like two strike counts, and a lot of people would definitely go back and say, go look at the Jake Berger at-bats, for instance, and those would usually paint a pretty good picture of what was going on. And – he would just miss, especially on his slider. He's missing his slider a lot in that opening day start, and he just wasn't placing his pitches all that well. Now, a lot of people have also noted that Mitch has been dealing with a, uh, a downtick in velocity a little bit uh, since the beginning of spring training and, of course, in that first start. I think a lot of that really attributes that he's not where he wants to be yet. None of these starters really are, and that's just across baseball. I mean, a lot of these guys are still trying to get their footing uh, from spring training. A lot of these guys are still trying to figure out uh, some of the new pitches they might have been working on. And another thing that we also saw from Mitch quite a bit in that opening day start was him going away from the sinker a little bit and using the cutter a little bit more. Now, the cutter was getting hit a little bit more, but it appears that he might be using that pitch a little bit more this season to maybe have less wear and tear on his elbow. I mean, keeping in mind that Mitch was six innings off of pitching 200 innings last year. He is the number one guy on the staff, bar none. As of right now, obviously you have the introduction of Jared Jones, who had a phenomenal start. You're going to have Paul Skeens coming up eventually. But as we're recording this show, as of April 3rd, 2024, Mitch Keller is the far and alone number one starter on the staff. And when you say that, you want Mitch to have those good starts. And I mentioned it on the show yesterday about how do the Pirates maintain this hot start and what are they doing right? Well, they have a top five to top 10 bullpen in all of baseball. They have an offense that can keep them in games, but it would be very nice to get a guy like obviously Mitch Keller, who they just extended for a bunch of money in the off season to earn spring training to get him to a point where he's doing what he was doing last year, six to seven innings. Because if you can get six to seven innings of quality pitching from Mitch Keller, folks, these games are going to be over in a heartbeat. The offense is going to give him a lead more often than not. The bullpen is going to keep that lead more often than not. Now, early in the season, he went five and two thirds in that first game. I'd like to see him go six strong tonight. And it's something that I think he can obviously do. As far as the adjustments, 
that come from his opening day start. You obviously want to see his command a little bit better. You want to see his placement of his pitches a lot better, especially that slider. The slider was the one that I wanted to point out the most because it just seemed like he wanted to throw it. And it's a pitch that he's, it's a nasty pitch that he throws, but he just kind of kept leaving it a little too high. And he did that again against the likes of Jake Berger and Josh Bell that day. And it, Hurt him. I mean, Jake Berger, I believe, was three for four on the day for that start. And it was just one of those things that you look at and you say, okay, eliminate those things. And this is something that Mitch Keller can definitely do is eliminating poor uh, pitch placement on two strike counts. More often than not, he's going to do that. He's that kind of player. He's that talented. That's why he was, of course, extended over the offseason. He is a talented pitcher. And if he can eliminate that from opening day, you take probably at least two runs off the board there from those mistakes. But as we've seen the Pirates do so well on offense thus far, we've seen them take advantage of those two strike counts and those two out situations where they extend innings and get under a pitcher's skin. The Marlins kind of did the same thing to Mitch Keller. I do expect him to have a rebound tonight, though. I mean, the Nationals, they have bats up and down this lineup. C.J. Abrams, Joey Manessis, uh, Eddie Rosario. Jesse Winker, you're looking at guys like that that can make an impact for this team in the Washington Nationals. But you also know that Mitch Keller, it's going to be very hard for me to sit there and say that Keller is going to have the same kind of start that he had against Miami, really because all he has to do is eliminate the two-strike placement issue that he had on opening day. And I think that's something that he can obviously do. If he could place that slider a little bit better, find – if he wants to throw the cutter, if he can find a way to make that cu uh, cutter a very consistently good pitch, which it, it relatively is. I mean, Mitch has three different fastball pitches. He has a sinker, a cutter, and a fastball. He'll lean into the sinker still, I think, a good bit, but he does show a willingness to want to throw this cutter. And if he's going to show the cutter, he's going to have to work through ways to how it's going to work for him. What kind of pitch is it going to be for him? These are just things that he's going to have to work on. And that might take a minute, but I do expect that we do get a Mitch Keller rebound tonight purely because a lot of the issues that he had on opening day are fixable issues. It's nothing that was really out of whack. Like he had a bad start, but it wasn't like a blow up terrible start because even going back and watching it again, there were multiple moments in that game, especially in his outing where the pirate or where the pirates and Mitch Keller got out of the game or got out of situations that could have taken that game out of reach. He gave up five runs, four earned, but he easily could have given up six or seven. But he fought through those moments. He got through that, and that's something that we saw in the maturation of Mitch Keller last season and really his jump to becoming the ace of the staff and saying, okay, let me get out of these situations and not let this snowball. And that's something that Mitch Keller has done very well. Now, as far as the start that I'd expect from him tonight, with me expecting a rebound for Mitch Keller, I think that you, you, you do get a rebound start from him. I think that he'll go six strong innings uh, in the realm of one to two earned runs, five, maybe six, four to five, maybe six hits. I think his strikeout number will be a lot better from opening day. He only had three strikeouts on the day. I'd expect him to have easily over five, maybe even six or seven on the day. And I think he's going to have a good day against this Nationals lineup. Again, it's a lineup that has players up and down. I mean, you look at Victor Robles, you look at C.J. Abrams, uh, Joey Manessis, Kybert Ruiz. I already mentioned uh, um, Jesse Winker, Lane Thomas at the top of that lineup. They have guys that can hit on this Nationals team, but I do think Mitch Keller is going to take the initiative. He's going to rebound from the start that he had on opening day, and he's going to show us why he got that extension in the offseason and why he's the number one pitcher on this staff, bar none. The Pirates were off yesterday, but general manager Ben Charrington was not as he made the move to acquire Joey Bart from the San Francisco Giants. We're going to talk all about that move, what it means for the backup catcher position, what Joey Bart brings to the table, and more in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, we're going to talk about prize picks. Folks, download. 
the uh, prize picks app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100 because prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players players from the diamond in your prize pick entries whether it's strikeouts rbis or first inning runs take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today you can get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks when the um, basketball playoffs roll around as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason playoffs for the nba begin april 20th with the play-in round beginning on april 16th Price Picks also has something for every sports fan, from baseball and basketball to even League of uh, Legends and everything in between. So download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, download the Price Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. And folks, also, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast, everybody here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. And as you heard right before the break, the Pirates decided to make a move last uh, late last night, obviously uh, in response to some things going on with the roster, acquiring former number two overall pick in the 2018 MLB draft and catcher Joey Bart from the San Francisco Giants, a move that was kind of interesting. Uh, shout out to some people uh, on Twitter that actually shared some of their thoughts on it and said that they were uh, thought Joey Bart would end up being a future pirate at some point. Well, you were right. He is now a Pittsburgh pirate after being designated for assignment by the San Francisco Giants to make room uh, on their roster. Obviously, you look at Joey Bart. He made the roster for the San Francisco Giants, did not appear in a game yet this year. And with Patrick Bailey, over there in San Francisco, kind of really taking the reins of that position since Buster Posey left. I mean, really, the Giants have been trying to find their everyday guy behind the plate and just haven't been able to find it. Patrick Bailey has kind of uh, taken over that role now. It's left Joey Bart really no place to play, really, at that point outside of backup catcher. Giants designated for assignment. Pirates decided, hey, we're going to swoop in and get them. Really didn't give up a lot either to get them. They uh, traded right-hander Austin Strickland in this deal to get Joey Bart. He was their eighth-round selection last year in the MLB draft. Did not appear, of course, in a game for the Pirates at all. So really not much that they gave up to get Joey Bart. And I'll have a story uh, probably either before or after this show goes live on what Joey Bart means for the backup catcher position. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today too, because this move obviously in response to uh, a couple of things, Uh, the corresponding move to get him on the roster is uh, a catcher, Jason delay going to the injured list uh, for 10 days, I believe is what we're expecting from Jason delay. No note of what his injury is thus far, but he is going to be on the injured list, which will be the corresponding move for now to get Joey Bart on the roster. Seeing as Joey Bart has no options, he could not go to the minor leagues or the Pirates have also had the, he just can't go to the minor leagues. And it's in response to that. And also we've seen Yasmani Grandal, one of the Pirates offseason acquisitions deal with a foot injury throughout a lot of spring training. Didn't get a lot of time, if any time really in spring training to play at all. and still has been struggling getting back. So this could all be in response to that as well. And it's very interesting when you break this all down and before we break it down in terms of what it means for the Pirates, you look at Joey Bart, 27 years of age, played in four seasons with the Giants, slash 219, 288, 335, with 11 homers, 16 doubles, and 38 RBIs. Now, it, it's an interesting move. 
I will say this. I mean, you're looking at a guy again, number two overall selection in 2018, was highly touted, expected to be the guy after Buster Posey hung up his cleats, was pushed up by the Giants relatively quickly because of that when Buster Posey decided to retire. And in 2022, you looked at Joey Bart. And you can go back and look at his numbers and see that 2022 was his most played season and also the season where a lot of people expected him to really take that next step. Had a 660 OPS and 92 WRC+. plus. Didn't really follow through with it the following season. Last year, obviously, dealt with a multitude of injuries, mainly his back and his groin. Didn't really have that much success at the minor league level as well. Um, in AAA Sacramento last year, He did relatively good for the catcher position, 248 with six home runs, 28 RBIs, and a 750 OPS in 60 games. Um, So you find it interesting as to what the Pirates are going to do. As for right now, Joey Bart is the backup catcher. They don't have another option. Ali Sanchez obviously elected free agency about a week, week and a half ago, and Abraham Gutierrez and Carter Benz just aren't ready yet. So the Pirates didn't really have a backup option sorry, excuse me, when Jason DeLay uh, was injured. And with Grandal injured as well, they needed a backup catcher for Davis, and now they have one. And you look at that in the microcosm of what are they going to do once those guys are healthy, I think is the biggest question that a lot of us had when this signing was or this acquisition was made official, is what happens when Yasmani Grandal and Jason DeLay return? You're not going to carry four catchers on the roster. You might not even carry three. And with Joey Bart not having any options, that does complicate things a bit. Just uh, Jason DeLay does. So I could see a world where Jason DeLay comes back up for a little bit. Joey Bart and Jason DeLay kind of have a catcher battle for the backup spot behind Davis. And then you send DeLay back to AAA if he doesn't end up winning that job. Now, again, low risk, potentially High reward here with a guy like Joey Bart. He is the kind of player that had a lot of potential uh, coming out. Obviously, a number two overall selection will tell you that. And he hasn't amounted to it really at all. But you look at some other things. He did improve a little bit last year defensively, which is something the Pirates love at the catcher position. He uh, was worth two framing runs and one caught stealing above average last year. And His defensive metrics overall for his career are not great. He's a negative six defensive run save guy, but you never know. Maybe the change of scenery works out for a guy like Joey Bart. Maybe you end up looking up and saying, okay, cool. The Pirates have a very valuable backup catcher now. Now, if you really want to think very far deep into the future here, I mean, next season, Andy Rodriguez is going to be back at some point too. So what do you do if Joey Bart is still around at that point? I am, I am a big component, and this is a whole nother story for a whole nother day, that I think any Rodriguez is not going to be a catcher when he comes back. He has the ability to play right field. He has the ability to play first base. He's even played a little bit of second base in his short uh, professional career, excuse me. And it's something that I think could be interesting. But as far as this Joey Bart thing is concerned, I don't see any major issue with it. I don't think that... This is a move that people should shun in any way. Obviously, he has not amounted to the immense potential that he had when he came out of college at um, Georgia Tech. But as a backup catcher for now, I think it's fine. He gets the opportunity to have a fresh start somewhere else. He has the opportunity to work alongside Henry Davis, Jason DeLay, and Yasmani Grandal in what is now all of a sudden a deep catcher room. Because, I mean, you're expecting potentially that when uh, Yasmani Grandal comes back, you could see a three-catcher room where Henry Davis, who the Pirates, of course, want to get every at-bat possible that they can this year, you want to see Henry Davis get all those at-bats. Maybe you have Grandal and Joey Bart in the fold to allow Henry Davis to DH on his catching days off and not have as many days off as he would normally have. Right now, not that much of a possibility, seeing as you want to keep Davis fresh with really only two catchers available to you, those being... Henry Davis and Joey Bart now with this acquisition. But again, it's an acquisition that when you look at, look at it and break it down, it's low risk, probably middle to low reward, but could eventually be high reward. It's one of those moves that I think you could look back on and say, wow, that's all they gave up to get a guy like Joey Bart. It's also one of those moves that I could say it just didn't work out, but the pirates didn't give up 
a ton to get him anyway. So as far as this move is concerned for now, what he brings to the table, he's going to bring decent defense. Hopefully some of those bat tools that he showed in, uh, at Georgia tech, whenever he was an ACC player of the year, hopefully you get to see some of those things as well, but we'll have to wait and see, but for now, He's going to be the backup catcher. We'll see what happens when Jason DeLay and Yasmani Grandal come back when they're healthy. And that's really all there is to it right now. But the Pirates acquired Joey Bart from the San Francisco Giants for practically nothing. And we'll see what he brings to the table in a Pirates uniform. The Pittsburgh Pirates will play game two of their series against the Washington Nationals tonight as it'll be Mitch Keller versus an old friend. We're going to talk about game two of the series, preview it a little bit and more. But before that, we're going to talk about game time. Folks, download the game time app today and use code first pitch for $20 off a minimum of $150 purchase because game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You get to pick out any game that you want to go to, like opening day for the Pirates this Friday, and who wouldn't want to do that? We're going to be blacking out PNC, so use Game Time to get your last-minute tickets for opening day this Friday. You get... Last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute deals for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. You also get all in pricing because toggling this feature shows you the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And Game Time also has ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. And the lowest price guarantee of Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time for a limited time. All users can get $20 off. Any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app using code First Pitch. Terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. So download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All righty, folks, and we are here for the final segment of today's episode on April 3rd, Wednesday, April 3rd of 2024, where we're going to be previewing Game 2 against the Washington Nationals today, where the Pittsburgh Pirates look to keep their undefeated season going as they are 5-0 and for the first time again since 1983. Nationals will enter this one 1-3. One of course, the Pittsburgh Pirates getting the W 8-4 to on Monday afternoon in the Nationals home opener. So the Pirates have now spoiled two home openers this year with the Miami Marlins and the Washington Nationals and hopefully will win their own when we see them in Pittsburgh in just a few days. Pirates, of course, favored in this one on FanDuel. And it'll be Mitch Keller versus an old friend of ours, Trevor Williams, who did not have the greatest season last year for uh, lack of a better word. 5.55 five, five ERA, 111 strikeouts, a 1.60 whip for Trevor Williams last year. Just not a great season for him overall. 6-10 and 10 if you still care about the wins. Um, but we'll see what we get from a guy like Trevor Williams. Obviously in Pittsburgh, a lot, I would say a lot better of a pitcher, obviously had that strong 2017, 2018 run since then. I mean, he was pretty decent with the Mets had a three Oh six ERA in 21, a three, two, one in 2022, albeit he only got 50 or um, 10 or 12 starts in that time had 30 starts last year for the Nats was a negative 0.1 war player. Again, you heard me mention the whip of 1.6, not that great. Didn't have the greatest strikeout to walk or uh, walk rate either. 2.1, not horrible. Definitely down from his time with the Mets and about what he was doing in Pittsburgh. So I expect the Pirates bats to have a pretty good day at the plate against a guy like Trevor Williams, which, as you may have noticed, is the first time the Pirates will be facing a right-handed starter this year in the sixth game of the season, which is absolutely amazing to me that they were able to do that, obviously, facing Jesus Lazardo, A.J. Puck, Trevor Rogers. And I can't remember who their other starter was all of a sudden. Braxton Garrett and um, Patrick Corbin 
on uh, Monday. So they've seen all the lefties they could pretty much see at this point, and they now finally get to see a righty. And really this pirate season, again, you guys have heard me mention it, has been defined by what this bullpen has done so far and what this offense has done so far. They're scoring 7.8 runs per game. They're doing a phenomenal job at putting runs on the board. The bullpen has done a really good job at just holding these games to where they need to be when they've been behind and maintaining the lead when they've been ahead. Obviously, there's been moments where they've given up leads. We saw it in Miami with David Bednar. We uh, also saw it almost a little bit with the Nationals, but then the Pirates, of course, got that big lead on Monday, and the bullpen shut it down thanks to Ryder Ryan, and then, of course, Araldis Chapman getting the final out of the game when it got to 8-4. to four. So keys to victory in this one, I think just keep doing what you've been doing. Let that top of the lineup continue to just maul. Brian Reynolds has had a phenomenal start to the year. Key Brian Hayes has also had a phenomenal start to the year thus far. So you want to lean on those guys as well. Um, some interesting notes here as far as uh, Mitch Keller goes against the Washington Nationals. Eddie Rosario has seven at-bats on his career against Mitch Keller and is batting 571 with a 1.571 OPS, one home run, and three RBIs. Meanwhile, you look at some of the other guys that have had significant amount of at-bats. Jesse Winker, obviously, who was in uh, Cincinnati at one point, has a 364 average and an 819 OPS against Keller and 11 at-bats. You look at uh, Joey Gallo and five at-bats having a 200 average average, but a homer off of Keller. So very interesting that they have um, experience against Keller, uh, this Washington Nationals lineup. As far as things go for the Pirates against Trevor Williams, they've only had six players ever face off against Trevor Williams. Connor Joe has a 500 average and two at-bats against them. Kutch has a 200 average and five at-bats. Oliveira has a 500 average and two at-bats. Uh, Brian Reynolds has a 400 average and an 800 OPS against Trevor Williams. So I think we can expect yet another big day from Brian Reynolds against the Nationals, who he just notoriously always has a very good time against. Rowdy Telez, who I expect to be in the lineup against the righty, obviously, with a 500 average and 1,000 OPS and two at-bats against Trevor Williams. So not much experience against Trevor Williams for this Pittsburgh Pirates lineup, but I'm not going to make a prediction today, but I do think the Pirates have a good time in this one. I think the offense will do very good things. I think Mitch Keller, obviously, as I spoke at the top of the show, will have a rebound start tonight. I think we'll see him go six innings or maybe even more. I think he'll have a very good time against this Washington Nationals lineup, which, mind you, as I said again, does have some bats in it. I just don't think that Mitch Keller is going to have two bad starts in a row to start the campaign. And then, of course, with Trevor Williams on the bump, I think Brian Reynolds, Key Brian Hayes, O'Neal Cruz will finally get to face a righty, even Rowdy Telez and Jack Sawinski. I would keep my eyes on the left-handed hitters today. They've been fiending and waiting to face a right-handed starting pitcher. O'Neal Cruz, Jack Sawinski, and Rowdy Telez will finally get that opportunity at 6.45 Eastern time tonight at Nationals Park in Washington, D.C., where the Pittsburgh Pirates will let, look to win their sixth game of the season and their sixth in a row and remain undefeated. We will see what they can do tonight against the Nationals. And folks, your rest of your episodes this week for me are going to be from Pittsburgh. My flight to Pittsburgh leaves tomorrow. I'm excited to see a lot of you on opening day on Friday. My whereabouts will be very known. So if you want to say hi, just come say hi. And as always, thank you for tuning into this episode of Locked On Pirates here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. Follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates. Again, for all of your news, analysis, opinions, and reactions to everything going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates, you can find this show free and available to you on YouTube and most, if not all, of your audio platforms. And folks, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow from Pittsburgh. But until then, see you on the flip side.